All right. And good morning, everyone. This is Barbara from the Everyday Riches Show, and we are so excited. I am your personality pro because personality does drive reality. You know, and I'm on a mission to make happiness the norm rather than the exception, just for helping people to have lead happy, healthy, financially free lives. And, you know, I am so grateful today to have on our guest, Sharon Smith, because we are going to talk about the things that she does to help us to live happier, healthy, financially free, abundant lives. You know, and that's what this show is all about. So Sharon, thank you so much for coming on the Everyday Riches Show. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm excited to be here and hello and good morning to everybody. And hello to all of you watching this in replay. No matter when you're seeing us, I'm glad you're here. Right. And yeah, thank you so much. So now Sharon, tell us a little bit about you. How did you get to be a transformation coach? <laughs> well, I'm actually, I tell you, I'm actually, I'm not a coach. Not a coach. Okay. I'm probably more of a cheerleader than anything. And uh, I am actually a pain specialist, just not the kind that you might be thinking of. I work with people exclusively by using targeted mind-body techniques. And I have clients all over the world in 14 countries. Oh and I produce regular videos for pain and other things. You know, I have things for like back pain, knee pain, psoriasis, eczema, depression. Um, I even have a new one coming out for chronically dry and chapped lips, if you can imagine. Anyway, then on my YouTube channel, and you guys have the link for that, and there are about 150 or so of those. And they're individual pieces of work to help you let go of the emotional things that are under the physical symptom you are experiencing. Right. I, and, you know, I am a firm believer in EFT. Uh, and I've been using it for so many years. So now, so how did you get to, how did you get to there? How did you get to... Like what's well, been your story, your journey? I mean, pain, of course, absolutely. I mean, we're all teaching what we know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, the way it the way it worked out for me, I had absolutely no idea uh, that I would ever be in the helping field. I mean, it wasn't anything interesting to me. But I had had lower back, chronic lower back, and hip pain from the time I was in my late teens, oh, and wow. I I tried everything. You know, I, I have literally tried everything. In my 20s, I added in chronic migraines. And, you know, just for fun. Right. And, yeah, and that went on for years and years. And I saw, I mean, I had chiropractic care and homeopathics and acupuncture and, you know, saw functional medicine doctors. And, and, and many, if not most things, did help, but only for a while. Right. It, I, there was nothing that was really a lasting fix for me. Nothing lasted more than a few days, few weeks. And I had known about EFT, about tapping, for, for quite a while, several years. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of interesting, uh, that tapping stuff. Yeah, it's interesting, but I don't know what you'd ever do with it. I don't know what you'd ever say or how you'd ever use it. Right. So I just kind of filed it away in, you know, the vast vastness of the back of my brain. And uh, in 2002... I was, I think I was, what, 45 maybe? And in perfect health, regular yoga practice, little kids, brand new big house, and a lot of stress. And I leaned over to put a cup in the dishwasher, and I could not straighten up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I was laid up for an entire week. And I was terrified that I'd never be okay again. I was, you know, a doctor friend paid a house call, and he's like, oh, yeah, you just lay here, take these pills, <laughs> you know, you'll be okay. You just have a bad back. And I remember instantly my first thought was, I, no, I don't. I don't have a bad back. I have a perfectly good back. What's, what's going on here? Right. So I made myself a promise during that week that I was going to figure out why this was happening to me. And I was going to find a way to fix it. And so I started looking. And uh, it was not until probably 2004 I went to have a massage with a, a friend of mine and she met me at the door. And she's like, oh, my God, you have to see this list. And I'm like, OK, what is it? And she said, it's a list of everything. I just don't know what you'd ever do with it. 
And it was in a book called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die by Carol Kuhn Truman. And in the back of this book is a list of over 200 illnesses and ailments and their probable underlying emotional causes. And the oh. minute I, yeah, I know, I know. The minute. You'll have to repeat the name of that book for our audience. I, I absolutely will. Uh, I'll show it here. Well, I'll just show it to you. Whoop. I always, I always have it right here. It's a reference work for me. Whoops, there we go. Feelings Buried Alive Never Die by Carol Truman, and it's Carol with a K. And it's a great book. But the instant that I looked down at that list, it was like the cartoon character with the light thing over the head. I, I had this enormous download of information. And I immediately knew a whole lot of things. The first thing I knew was that pain is not what we had thought. We, we've completely misunderstood what it is. It's not here as punishments. It's here to help us. And it's a guide. The second thing that I knew was that, oh my gosh, this is a map. This is how to use tapping to help yourself when you don't know what you have going on because we're kind of disconnected. Right. So it was a whole big bunch of stuff that came in and I started working with it the same day and I never looked back. And that was, you know, I got, I attended uh, Gary Craig's master's boot camp. I applied for that. And, you know, I've been working for a while and they said, yeah, I'll come on down to my surprise. Come on out. We'll take you. And so, yeah, I did that and just kept working and never looked back. And that was 2005. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't set out to do this as a business. I just, you know, I'm, isn't that the truth of, of a lot of people? That, that we start out doing one thing and thinking, like like for myself, I it was like, gee, would I, how, why would I be talking about happiness? And yet, it has been the biggest blessing in my life. And But it was born out of when my husband passed away, thinking that I would never, ever be happy again. Oh, yeah. Yet now it's been almost 10 years this year, and... It's like, oh, wow, I can honestly say that I am happy. And now I want to help other people who have been through some kind of trauma or to get to get their happiness back to and to live and to be able to increase their income by and because happiness affects income. Yeah. Happiness is an internal thing. It's and, amazing. you know, one of the things I tell people about pain is that it always has emotional components underneath it. Always. It doesn't matter what kind of pain you've got, or whoop, my camera just did a little weird thing. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason it works that way is because we as human beings are designed to feel and experience a full range of emotions. We all come equipped with the same emotions and we're designed to experience the full range. But what we are not designed to do is to hold on to fear, anger, and grief right. for prolonged periods of time. When we do that, it begins to cause our physiology to break down and or malfunction, which results in pain and or dis-ease, in fact. Right. So, so yeah, and, that, and that's, that's my thing, is helping people let go of all the emotional stuff they've got going on underneath the physical symptom that they're experiencing. Right. I have to share with you one little funny story, a little bit of a funny story. One day I had learned TAP, I had learned EFT, and mm -hmm. this, you know, just kind of doing little little bits and pieces. But then one day I was over at my girlfriend's and she was having just a meltdown about her mother-in-law. And I said, well, you know, I've just learned this new technique. Let's see if there's anything out there, you know, on, on YouTube is our friend. Let's see if there's anything out there by getting rid of resentments against mother-in-laws. And so that's kind of what we put into, we put into YouTube. And so there was there happened to be one of how to release resentment and i said mary we are going to do this let's do this probably maybe 30 seconds into the first round we were both in tears obviously i had been resenting something because it was absolutely a release and yes. which is what i want to talk about uh which i want to have you talk about but it was just the weirdest thing is that I did it for her. You know, she had the resentment and yet I knew something had released in me. 
So do you know why? There's actually a, there's actually a name for that. How do you explain that? How do you okay. it, it's it's actually a thing. It's not a very good name. I need to call it something else. But in the tapping community, it's known as borrowing benefits. Oh, okay. And it works because we are all connected in ways that we're only beginning to find. Oh. And because we all have exactly the same set of emotions as human beings, oh, right. we tap on ourselves, even for someone else's issue. And I use this in my group all the time. Everybody tap. You want to tap with everything we do, whether or not you think it's your issue. Even if you don't have knee pain, we're going to tap for somebody's knee pain. And I'll have five or six people that are on that live call go, oh, my gosh, I feel so much better. And I didn't have knee pain. Right. And that's the way it works. When you work with emotions, everybody benefits every right. time. Wow. That is so cool because at the time, I mean, I had just, I had just been introduced to the technique and it was like, well, let's just try this, you know, and it was just amazing. So now I know why. That yeah, that's why. And I got to, I got to tell you something cool and interesting about tears. And then I want to talk a little bit about how tapping works because my explanation is completely different than anybody else's. Perfect. But tears, when you cry, tears, they have found contain different chemicals depending on why you're crying. Tears cried in joy have a completely different chemical composition than tears cried in grief. Oh, wow. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Yeah. Okay, never yet. Well, you know, that, that's one of my favorites. One of my favorite sayings is, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. I know, it's, there's so much oh, cool stuff out idea. there. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that we we are learning so much more about how our physiology works and how we are all connected. Wow, that is very cool. That yeah. is cool. So, I I asked you ahead of time if you would be willing to do a tapping round with us. And um, now, do you want to go? Do you want to go into your explanation first and share with us how? We, and then we and then we can do that. Yeah, yeah. What would you like to work on today? Gee, oh, let's see. So should it be emotional or physical or? Doesn't matter. If you've got something physical, that's measurable. But emotional stuff can be measurable also. I like to show clear measurable results every time we work. So, so you know, yeah. Let's do a fun thing, Gee. You know, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes, like, I do these shows. And yet once in a while, I get stuck in taking action, the consistent action. Like this, I know is on my schedule, but when I have other things, okay, I'll give you an example. E mailing to people on my list and, and following up with people on my, that have connected with me. Okay. Was, would that be something that like, so to get more consistent, uh, maybe. I mean, that's, that's not really a, that's not, okay. It's, I mean, we can do that. It's, that's a form of self-sabotage that you stopping okay. yourself from moving forward. I, I really, yeah. Think about it for just a minute. Let me explain really quickly how tapping works. Uh, because my explanation of it does not involve the word amygdala. That's, you know, that's the common explanation is that it works on the amygdala to calm the fight or flight response. And it does, yeah, it does do that. Uh, and it is fun to say amygdala. We all like saying it. But that is not, that, that's only one tiny little way that it's functioning. And the way EFT, the way tapping works is that we are electrical in nature. And we know this. And it's not anything weird or woo-woo. If you've ever had an EKG, you know they're measuring the electrical output of your heart. Electroencephalogram is electrical brain activity. Our electrical charge is used in classic Western medicine as a diagnostic tool all the time. It's very common. We don't think it's anything weird at all. Mm -hmm. Now, tapping is based on acupuncture. And I think that the meridians, the acupuncture meridians, the diagrams of those, are an actual schematic of our physical wiring. So when we are tapping on these meridian endpoints, we are actually physically accessing our own electrical wiring, okay? Now, it works in another way as well, because we are speaking out loud when we do this. Our brain is 
wired just like the motherboard on a computer. They're actually made in our image, which is a, a whole interesting another talk. And we have, our brain is actually desired to keep us, it's designed, sorry, to keep us safe. Right, right. And we have files, programs, if you will, running in the background all the time, most of them from childhood. And when anything triggers us to not feel safe, fear, anger, grief, usually, any situation, your brain goes, okay, this, this does not feel safe. We're not going to deal with this emotion. This is overwhelming this thing. And it stores it, but it leaves a marker. It says, we'll come back and deal with that later. And if you don't, guess what? Here, here's a little physical reminder in your shoulder. It's going to hurt or you're going to get some headache pain or you're going to have something it will be or digestive issues. And that's you reminding yourself to come back and deal with that thing that you didn't the first time around. Right. But we haven't understood how to listen to it. Right. right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now like I can, okay, then I can remember as a child, of just, you know, because I was the outgoing one of the family. All the rest of them were much more retiring and just very traditional. And so I was a little bit more flamboyant. And I can remember being, and my uncle was that way. And I can remember my mom saying, you are so much like your uncle Albert. And that wasn't a good thing. So consequently, lots of times, it would be like she would just look at me and I would be. <laughs> so I think part of that, like now I'm compensating against that by being myself. And yet once in a while, it still comes out that I don't feel comfortable. Okay. That's, that's and that's what we want to work with. That feeling right there. Yeah. So, so let's just let everybody watching do this with us. Okay, Barbara, I want you to take a big breath in through your nose, hold it, and blow it out, and just keep your eyes closed, and just relax your shoulders. And what we did just there is not tapping. That, hold, that little holding the breath for a second or so causes increased right-left brain communication. Tapping works best when we use it with other things. So now we're about to do something that is also not tapping. I want Barbara to keep, just keep your eyes closed. I'm just describing what we're doing here to everybody. I want you to use your imagination and just go inside your body with that memory of your mom saying, you are just like your uncle. And see where in your body that is actually showing up. It may be in your chest or it may be in your head. Right in here. It's right in your chest, yeah, okay, that's, yeah. And that, and I'm looking at it with you because I can, <laughs> and that feels really tight. How does yeah. it feel from your side? Yeah, just like there's a, like it's heavy, like there's a weight, it's okay. a bit of a weight there. Okay, uh, now just, just feeling that, I want you to just keep your eyes closed and, and just no judgment here, give it a number between zero and 10, with 10 being overwhelming heaviness, and there is none. I would say it's like seven. Okay, that's a good number. That's you've carried that around plenty long. Yeah. Okay. And yet oh. I, I have to say, so I have done things to get rid of it, and yet it's I still feel it, it's there still today. So it's still it's layers, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's you haven't quite gotten to the heart of the issue. Okay. okay, now looking at that. Just looking at that, I want you to uh, tell it that we're going to give it some help. And go ahead and take a breath and open your eyes. Okay. All right. Now, um, we're going to do a couple things here. First, we're going to tap. Okay. About how old were you when six or seven, maybe eight? When it's first yeah up until teen, in teens and yeah and and i i look back and think i don't think my mom meant it the way i took it but has when it when the, i think i the first time i saw it uh or, or heard it i was probably a young kid because i was it's kind of this more 
Um, but as a teenager, I was more aware of it. Okay. All right. So everybody tap along with us because childhood things like that, everybody's got stuff and this may help you clear something of yours. So starting on and taking responsibility for your own physical, mental and emotional well-being. Okay. I was really a cool kid. I was really a cool kid. I was super outgoing. I was super outgoing. And I had a great personality. I had a great personality. But I had a thing happen with my mom. But I had a thing happen with my mom. That just stopped me. That just stopped me. And made me feel like I shouldn't be that way. And made me feel like I maybe I shouldn't be that way. But I'm open to letting go of this now. But I'm open to letting go of this now. Because I completely love and accept myself. Because I know, love, and completely accept myself. Even though I had this experience as a child. Even though I had this experience as a child. And it kind of shaped my whole life. And it shaped, shaped my whole life. It's still affecting me. And it's still affecting me. I'm open to letting go of this now. I'm open to letting go of this now. Because I do completely love and accept myself. Because I do completely love and accept myself. And I honor what I'm supposed to learn from this. And I honor what I'm supposed to learn from this. My mother told me. My mother told me. Oh, you're just like your uncle. Oh, you're just like your uncle. And that wasn't a good thing in our family. And that wasn't a good thing in our family. And even though she maybe didn't mean it the way it sounded. And even though she might not have meant it the way it sounded. It made me feel terrible. It made me feel terrible. It made me feel like I, it wasn't safe to be who I really was. It made me feel like I wasn't safe to be who I really was. I forgive my mother. I forgive my mother. She didn't know. She didn't know. Or maybe she just forgot. Or maybe she just forgot. How completely wonderful and perfect I was. How completely wonderful and perfect I was. In every single way. Every single way. I honor that she was just trying to keep me safe. I honor that she was just trying to keep me safe. And I totally forgive her. And I totally forgive her. And I also forgive myself. And I also forgive myself. Because I was just a little kid. Because I was just a little kid. And I thought, hey, that's my mom. Hey, that's my mom. She loves me and is and is keeping me safe. She loves me and is keeping me safe. So maybe she's right. So maybe she's right. And so I tamped down who I really was. So I tamped down who I really was. For my whole life. For my whole life. But I'm open to letting go of that now open to letting go of it now. I forgive everybody around this. I forgive everyone around this. Even my amazing uncle. Even my amazing uncle. It's safe to let go of this for now. It's safe to let go of this for now. And for the rest of my life. And for the rest of my life. Because I do completely love and accept myself. Because I do love and completely accept myself. Okay, now hold your wrist points and breathe. Peace. Okay. Now I want you to close your eyes and check in, and we're not quite done yet, and see what your number is. Oh, oh yeah, it's less. Okay. What's the number? You had a seven before. I would say three. Okay. All right. Go ahead and open your eyes. And I want you to just, let's just go to the top of the head here. I give myself permission. I give myself permission. To remember. To remember. That I am a powerful eternal being. That I'm a powerful eternal being. As are we all. As are we all. There's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. And now that I'm allowing myself to really remember that. And now that I'm allowing myself to really remember that. It's safe for me to turn loose of the last of this feeling. It's safe for me to turn loose of the last of this feeling. I allow myself to get clarity. I allow myself to get clarity. 
around what this experience of what this experience is designed to move me toward is designed to move me toward spiritually spiritually for my highest and greatest good for my highest and greatest good i wonder if it's possible i wonder if it's possible that i was supposed to learn that i was supposed to learn how to be okay with my brilliance how to be okay with my brilliance so that i could teach others so that i could teach others I am profoundly grateful for this gift my mother gave me. I'm profoundly grateful for this gift that my mother gave me. Now that I see it for what it really is. Now that I see it for what it really is. Okay, take a breath. Sorry to make you cry on a live. <laughs> no, it, it's just yeah it, it truly it's uh it's like yeah sorry but you're gonna you're gonna ball on the live it's just what i do <laughs> tears are good yeah they are okay but you know what i didn't put a lot of makeup on today so i'm <laughs> must have known um because yeah because otherwise i'd have black streets <laughs> well, okay good. close your eyes and check in and see if you've got a number anymore or if it's gone no, I feel it's like it's I feel lighter. Yeah, that area is all open now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I gotta tell you two things. I gotta fess up here. Uh because I don't talk about this. I talk about it in my lives and in my group, but I am also, in addition to everything else, I am also a practicing psychic medium and clairvoyant. Oh, okay. So when, I, when you're going in and looking at that, I'm looking at it with you too because I can. Yeah. So it's it's a useful fun thing right. now I want to very quickly tell everybody about water because and you're going okay what's that got to do with anything that just sounds like a non sequitur but it doesn't you know how everybody tells you to stay hydrated but right. no, but nobody ever tells you really why not even doctors oh just stay hydrated well right. here's why we're electrical in nature remember that Okay. What happens when you go out to start your car in the morning and the battery is low on fluid, on water? Oh, it doesn't start. That's right, because that battery cannot carry an electrical charge. Oh. oh. Guess oh. what? Guess what? Same thing happens in our physiology. Yeah. So when you experience one of the big three so-called negative emotions, they're all for growth. They're, they're none of them really bad but it can cause a short in your wiring, which is how you end up with the pain and or disease, whatever you've got going on. Mm. If you are not properly hydrated, this charge cannot flow without impediment through your body. Oh, right. And it can make it harder to repair a short or it can make it easier for you to short your wiring out. So I tell people if you are tapping especially if you're tapping along with me live or in video and you are not getting some pretty damn quick results, right. stop, drink about four ounces of water and come right back and try it again yeah. and, it'll, and you'll be okay. Yeah, and just before this session, I drank. And I like one and a half, one, I would, I, a full yeah. and then another half. Yeah, cheers, me too. But that is why. Now, I, I want to tell everybody, just because we've got a little time here and you said you'd let me talk about it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit more about water because water is is a really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I got to come up with a better word for it because it's not a thing. And I made this connection a lot of years ago when I read the book Hidden Messages in Water by Masaru Emoto. I'd been thinking about what tapping is and how it works for a long time. And I all of a sudden connected a whole lot of dots from that. He was a researcher in Japan. They set about to photograph water crystals. This book spent a long time on the New York Times bestseller list. I've read, I've seen parts of it. Okay, what they found was something interesting. They would photograph these water crystals and they found like Tokyo City water, they were broken, nasty looking things. Free flowing spring water formed beautiful symmetrical crystals. And, and that didn't really shock them. But then they found something really weird. They found that 
what you, if you put that water in a jar and talk to it and said, I love you, the crystals from Tokyo City Water would reform to be perfect and symmetrical. And they could photograph that. Wow. And by the same token, if you said, I hate you, the perfectly formed crystals would break. They'd be fractured and misshapen. And they documented this again and again and again. So water, a huge, think how much of us is actually water, okay? What if water is actually alive all, all on its own? Water is required for us to be incarnate. Right. It is. Well, every single drop of it that's ever been here is all still right here. And every drop that's in our bodies has been in dinosaurs and the ocean and trees and dogs and other people always since the beginning of this planet. It's right. It's always been here. So think about your self-talk. Mm -hmm. What we say to ourselves, we're taking that in. And the other thing I want you to think about, this is just great food for thought. I love, I love making these connections. What if every single civilization all over the world had, my camera just went weird, has received and passed down through generations instructions to give thanks before eating and drinking? Right. What if that has absolutely nothing to do with religion? What if it has to do with requesting a change in the molecular structure of what you're about to consume? because you're talking to the water. I was just thinking maybe before when I drink before I drink my glass of water say I love you water. I say that all the time. Yeah, that's I'm going to start doing that. I love you. Mm. Yeah. Down. There is no downside, but also we need to be saying I love you to ourselves. Yes. And and we you know, we say we say terrible things to ourselves. We are way harder most of us on ourselves than I mean, we would never say that stuff to someone else, but we'll say it to ourselves. And for ourselves. And, and I would like everybody to at least once a day, look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. It kind of is a life-changing thing. Right. One of, one of the exercises that I do with my clients is to look at, the, look at themselves in the mirror and say, Barbara, I am so proud of you for... Because we don't, especially women, we don't celebrate the things that we're good at or that we that we've done or that we've accomplished. Yeah, and that is like, oh yeah, but that you know, because I think for myself, I was brought up that you don't brag about yourself. But now we realize how important it is to celebrate the things that you do, because then it gets into your, it becomes part of your physiology, and you get to do more of it. Yeah, uh, what you just talked about, mirror work, is an excellent thing. I do that with my private clients. I, but when you're standing there and looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I, I love you and I'm really proud of you for tap while you say it. Oh, okay, yeah. If you want to, then, then the process is all of a sudden on steroids. Oh, I'll do that. Perfect. Great. Because, Great. because you're looking at yourself, you're talking out loud to you, Right. And now you're engaging your electrical system. It's a powerful thing. Powerful. Sharon, this has been absolutely amazing. So how can, number one, how can people get in touch with you? Okay. Uh, lots of different ways. I mean, I, I've had over 150,000 views on my YouTube channel. Cool. Make use of those. Okay. I created them for you. My channel is A Pain Plan with Sharon Smith. Or you can even go in and just type, I mean, YouTube really loves me now. If you've got, for instance, knee pain or something, you can just type in Sharon Smith, knee pain. And all the work I have for that is going to come up. Now, to get in touch with me personally, I think you guys have my email. It's right. Sharon at apainplan.com. Sharon at apainplan.com. I have a private Facebook. First day with my new lips here. Yeah. I, do, I also have a private Facebook group where I'm working on a regular basis. And members in that group have instant access to over 60 hours of the live replays. And as you just saw, the borrowing benefits thing, going back and working with all of those where I've worked live with people for all those hours, that is an incredible resource and body of work. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I remember when I did it with my friend, Mary, it was like so powerful. And yet I didn't understand. It was like, why am I crying? I mean, the tears were just, it was yes. like gusher. Yeah. She was so upset with her mother-in-law. Yeah, it really is. Now, I also do work privately. I don't do single sessions. I have created programs because what I found is, as I've said before, tapping works best when it's used with other things. And when people come to me for whatever it is, they, they're there for some real change. And they need to fasten their seatbelts because my program work, the work that they're doing every day in between when they see me one-on-one, -on -one, Right. is specifically designed by me, these are proprietary techniques, to create increased neuroplasticity. Right. Okay? And to cause the brain changes to, I call it psychospiritual change, to make the work that we are doing stick and be permanent. Mm -hmm. And that's why someone can come in and work with me for three weeks or six weeks and, and really get past an issue or multiple, a lot of times multiple issues. That's why the work works. Uh, so yeah, shoot me an email. I'd love to have a conversation with you. So Sherry, before we, I, we always, Pat and I always like to ask people, what are you most excited about going forward? You're like, this, especially this year, that it's the year of the woman. This is, this is uh, International uh, Women's History Month. What are you excited about going forward? Oh gosh, so many things. Um, Professionally, I'm excited because in the next 60 days, I'm going to be launching a new group program, a membership program, and I'm going to do live Zoom once a week with those people. They're going to get access to a lot of my private program components. That is going to be a game changer for an unlimited number of people. It, it's a rolling program, and my team are getting that put together right now. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited because in about six weeks, I'm going to go to Florida and stay for a while. Oh, yay. I love South Florida and my daughter's been down there for a while. It's closer to my son. And so I'm just, I'm going to go that way and stay for a few months and see how I like it and see what part I actually want to be in. So I'm really excited about that. Even, I, even though I know, yeah, everyone's going, wait, Florida in summer, excuse me. It's like, isn't that backward? But I'm, I'm, I'm going to be down there in the winter too. So, <laughs> but I'm really excited about that. Wow. All right. I am. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for coming on. And, you know, and I just want a little shout out to my co-host, Pat. Pat's kind of a little under the weather today. Yeah. yeah so we're going to, we're just, you know, keep her in our prayers and, uh, you know, hope, hope she feels better. She is being gracious enough to be in the background doing the, the background part of the show today. Uh, but uh, like, oh, Pat, I hope you feel better soon. I know. It was really a shame. And I, Pat, you're, Pat, it's Pat. I didn't know you before. I did, you know, I'd met Pat online and yeah. she's who invited me to be here today. So I'm really grateful to her and to you. This was a lot of fun. Invite me back again sometime. I, I love it. I was just going to say that we will definitely have you back. Anyway, so absolutely everybody, have a great day. This is Barbara Ellison from Everyday Riches. Thank you so much for watching. And you know what to do. You know that there are things that we're not allowed to say and things that we're not supposed to tell you to do. So you know what to do, where to do it. Um, so uh, in the book of face. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so Pat is going to be ending this show and we will be talking to you soon. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye. Okay.